Hello and welcome back to the Not Ruled From YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Before I introduce what you've already seen the title and the thumbnail, please do remember to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Of course, this exclusive interview is with Lyndon Dykes, perhaps one of the bigger names we have had on Not Ruled From across our website and YouTube channel so far. Lyndon's had a remarkable rise in football in recent years. He's gone from working in a factory to playing for Queen of the South and making it as a full-time footballer. But beyond that, he has now gone on from Livingston to QPR in the English Championship, leading the line for Scotland. They had a choice between Australia and Scotland. Who did he want to represent in the national stage? He chose Steve Clark's side, and it's proven to be very fruitful for him and the nation. Dykes, a big part as to why Scotland is going to Euro 2020 next summer. And he will likely lead the line when Scotland faced teams like England at its first major tournament since 1998. So I'd like to have him on our channel and on our website, speaking about his journey from places like Queen of the South, how he's dealt with all the newfound fame that he's came into, as well as his time so far at QPR following a seven-figure transfer from Livingston earlier this season, as well as a bit about his time in West Lothian and how thankful he is for that, as it did prove to be a massive turning point, not only in his career in football, but also in his personal life. So we hope you do enjoy it. Please do remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, take it easy. Um, right, I'll just get started then. Um, is it finally starting to settle down for you after what had been a crazy six months at the end of last year? Yeah, it's definitely uh, settled down now. Um, it was a bit hectic at the start, but it's good that everything's done now and um, everything's sorted. So, yeah, it's just so so far so good besides this lockdown. Mm, all right, because it's usually the same down there, isn't it? It's third national lockdown in England as well. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we were a little bit before you guys. I think um, we were before Christmas or something. But, yeah, it's a bit mad, to be honest. Mm. How has it sort of been at QPR then? Because I suppose it's a weird one. Um, even though you can connect with fans and stuff and that, it's obviously nowhere near the same as you've had anywhere else. Yeah, it's it is. It's obviously the club's been great and stuff. Um, obviously, the, this pandemic's been hasn't been the best for myself. Obviously, moving down here and not being able to get the full full fans in, and um, obviously the training grounds a little bit different as well. And um, protocols with the with the COVID and what you can do what you can't do but I mean it's um at least I'm privileged that I can even go get to play football a lot of people are stuck in their houses um so yeah it's not really much we can do at the moment and hopefully sooner than rather than later it, uh, it all changes. Mm. And I suppose you'll be hoping football um, stay, stays on down south because from what we've been reading up here even though it's not made its way this way yet thank touch wood um, but the circuit breaker and stuff getting suggested for you guys down south? Yeah, obviously, um, recently it's been a bit bit more difficult. Obviously, there's been a lot of games getting postponed and with COVID and teams getting COVID in the team. And um, yeah, so hopefully it stays on. But I think everyone's come to the fact now that they can't really do much with this with this virus and uh, whatever whatever goes goes really at the moment. You personally, though, I mean, you've played pretty much every game since you went down there. Probably you can't ask for much more than that. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, I want to be playing games. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy. Um, obviously, I'm trying to still learn a lot of my game and learn um, as I go. And I think I've got a lot to prove on and a lot lot, lot of areas to get better in. And um, obviously, playing games is is the way to do that. Uh, obviously, playing against better upper uh, opposition down here um, is going to make you better as well. So um, I just got to keep working hard and hopefully keep playing. Mm, has it been just as you expected, the English Championship quality-wise? Yeah, obviously expected it to be really hard. And um, I think obviously it's just every team's very hard and um, I think every game can you can either win or you can lose. Uh, obviously, we haven't started uh, this season as good as we should be. And it's been kind of tough for us, but um, with the quality that we have, we should be definitely reaching higher. And um, but with opposition that has has been so hard, and we've got great players as well that we we need to be beating teams. So um, yeah, obviously it's it's been a hard hard. Uh, obviously the teams have been hard coming down, but um, this is where I want to be, and I want to want to keep getting higher and higher. So yeah. Mm. 
And has it helped Drew settle in a wee bit? Because obviously spoke a wee bit about Liam Kelly and things like that, but guys like him, Mark Warburton, these are all guys that have been up in Scotland at least for a period and then came down to QPR. Yeah, I think obviously it did help. Obviously they know what it's like up there. Um, obviously the manager knows what it's like obviously being up there as well. So um, yeah, it, obviously it was good. And obviously I knew Liam going down there. Uh, obviously I didn't, I didn't play with him, but we just we knew each other. So it was good to at least not everyone being a, a fresh face. So yeah, he's, he's a good guy, good guy. And obviously Lee Wallace is there as well. So um, yeah, it helped. It helped a lot. Life in London as well, you've probably not really been able to experience that, just stuck in the house now. Nah, yeah, it's obviously uh, a little bit more mad. I'm a little bit outside of London, but um, yeah, it's a different world, obviously, from Dumfries. Uh, <laughs> such a small bit there, but uh, yeah, I, I kind of like my, my quiet my quiet time anyway, so I'm not really too fast. I don't mind being locked in the house. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it, was, it was a very stressful moving house and obviously finding schools and that for my, for my little ones. I think everyone wants 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 it gone, and uh, hopefully it's gone soon. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, just but where were you sort of this time two years ago? Because were you still at um, Queen of the South twenty nineteen? Yeah, I was at yeah I was at Queen of the South. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because it's sort of in those two years, it has just been some rise for you. Like you've pretty much went from Championship striker making your way in the game to now you're pretty much established in the English football league. Yeah, obviously it was kind of mad. Um, obviously, I went to Livingston and kind of just just was really amazing. To be honest, it just kind of when someone goes to like a place in their their career, and sometimes it just fits just so well. And that was that was Livingston to me, and it was a great place. And even on the pitch, we had an amazing season. And for myself, obviously, I played really really well as well. Um, I don't even think I got a full season at Livy because we finished the season early. But um, yeah, the last two years has been crazy to where I am. So um, obviously being late to the game and late to being a being a professional, um, it's moved really quick. And um, I'm I'm always looking to look forward. So obviously I'm just keep working hard and I, I want to keep getting higher and higher. Mm, yeah, I've seen that pathway and I'm sure we'll speak about it in a wee bit, even with the Scotland national team, just with the amount of players in there that haven't exactly just went from academy to like a proper senior team. They have sort of went from lower leagues, League 2 Championship to where they are now. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're starting to see that a little bit more now. Um, sometimes in the academies and that players get lost, uh, but sometimes when you don't really come through academies and you're in lower leagues and you kind of just doing your own thing sometimes that helps a lot and um, I think a lot more players are kind of going down that route now mm, yeah because it is it's a very um, different world I'm assuming where was your sort of first club but back in Australia yeah obviously I played in Australia but it was just it wasn't anything professional um, it was I had a full-time job and it was just part-time and training at nights and playing on the weekends just with my mates kind of thing and and my first club was really Queen of the South, and that was that was even a massive step for myself, uh, just being full time. And every club that I've went to now is just keeps getting uh, bigger steps for myself and more professionalism um, in each club. And um, and yeah, so it's been a bit a bit crazy. What was your um, full time job for football? Uh, I worked as a heat sealer in a in a sports company, just in a factory. Um, Mm-hmm. But I, I, yeah, I've done a lot of things. Just kind of worked around, just as as everyone else does, and just played football on the side with, for fun with my mates. It just shows you, but doesn't it? Just how quickly things can change. Because I can imagine, even when you were doing that, um, to be where you are now, probably um, a, a decent wee flat and stuff in London must be quite a change. Yeah, I mean, um, it's mad if you actually like think, sit and think about it. Where I've where I've kind of come from, and. Um, yeah, just it's uh, it's been a it's been a roller coaster of a ride, but I think it just shows to everyone out there that, um, especially young players, that a lot of things can change very quickly if you just kind of put your mind to it, and as long as you work hard. When did you sort of feel at the moment it sort of clicked for you, and you could maybe feel like it was going to sort of it all exploded overnight, really for you? But where was there a particular game where you thought I could take this to the next level? Um, obviously coming to Queens was a massive thing for me. Um, 
I was very determined when I when I came back to Queens to the first team to try and make it as a uh, professional um, in football and I thought I'd done really well at Queens and then obviously going to Livingston um, I was really happy but I think the one game that kind of blew up after that game was the goal when I scored against Celtic and we beat Celtic at Livy. Um, I think that kind of helped the whole the whole club and the whole team, and for myself as well, it it, it put me on the mar- uh, on the market, and um, a lot of people started talking about me, and that's when I kind of thought that if I just knuckle down here and um, just keep doing what I can do, and then I can end up anywhere, and um, that's kind of what I done from the get go, and now that I'm at QPR, that I'm just gonna try work out here as well, and do my best to, to keep going. Okay, I can mind um, where was it? I think it was uh, last January when you beat Mullow 1 0 and you get brought up for post match press. And it was, I think it was just after all the Celtic rumours were flying about. And in the press room after, I can mind there was like four or five minutes of, are you going to Celtic keep doing this? Are you going to Scotland to stay with you? I think back and forth. How did you sort of deal with that? Because that must have been a very different challenge as well, all that outside noise. Yeah, I think. Um... Obviously, it was. It starts to get a bit mad when everyone starts talking. Um, but I think for myself, I just kind of just stuck my head down and was just not really focused on what was going to happen and just whatever happened was going to happen. Um, so I, to be fair, I was just enjoying my time and just enjoying playing at Livy and going in and the boys were great and the manager was great and the whole club was great as well. So um, yeah, I just didn't really think about much and. And then uh, just kind of went with the flow. You said it did a, a good job that day, I think, uh, keeping you safe. Um, but, <laughs> but um, no, it has um, obviously been quite... After that January, um, obviously the season got cut, but um, you really started to hit form again after sort of those sort of games, January, March, when you probably could have pushed for Europe if the season continued. Yeah, I think we were unfortunate. Obviously, I think we could have actually done done better than we ended up finishing. Um, but for myself, I think with the first lockdown, obviously we stopped and um, we actually worked really hard as a group, as Livingston. We've done a lot of Zoom calls as everyone else and a lot of uh, work at home. But for myself, I think when I came back in that preseason, um, I think that was the fittest that I've been. Uh, I worked really hard in that in that lockdown and and I, I started off started off well. So, um yeah, I just, I don't know, I just kept doing what I was doing and just kept trying to improve and um, and now now I've ended up here, yeah. Mm, are, you st- are you getting the same Bruno Fernandes stick for the penalty spot, eh? <laughs> nah, I don't know. Uh, huh? I, yeah, I don't know, just just kind of is what it is and obviously if there's a priority there, I'm, I'm happy to take it and it's unfortunate I didn't take any for Scotland, but uh, yeah, it was, it's... No, I'm sure Bruno's not. I'm sure Bruno's not uh, complaining about them either. Yeah, well, that's it. You still need to score them. I've seen many a um, many a player go and blitter them over the bar. So I mean, you've got a fairly decent record on them. Yeah, just just keep going. Just uh, keep it up, and hopefully, just keep hitting back the net with them. Mm. Oh, when it all blew up in in January, September, early time. Um, when did this? So I'm sure you've been asked this a million times, but. Um, when did you sort of first hear about the QPR interest or just interest in general? Uh, obviously, it was a lot of interest kind of floating around at the moment, uh, at that time. And um, there was obviously a few other things kind of popping up here and there and a lot of, a couple of things kind of fell through. And then obviously, QPR got in touch. Um, and it went, just when they got in touch, it went kind of quick, uh, kind of, happened really quick and they got in touch with my agent obviously went through all that kind of that kind of stick has a lot of backroom um activity that a lot of people wouldn't see and a lot of stress and a lot of um things getting organized but yeah when the QPR kind of thing come up and um, it went really fast but I was I was absolutely delighted and absolutely just buzzing to try and get there and um Livingston and uh, was absolutely amazing with it and Davy and the gaff at the time and um, uh, Gary Holt were, were great with me and um, yeah it just was just something that I wanted to do so it just kind of happened and um, 
yeah, it was, it was, it was it's hard to explain, but it just, just, yeah, kind of went with it. So. Yeah, no, I was just saying, obviously, um, it, it was unheard of, like, price tags and things that were getting banded about um, for a club like Livingston and for yourself personally. I mean, it's it's life-changing. Yeah, it is. Um, I think, obviously, Livy, it helped Livy out a lot, um, and which is which is really great because they deserved it. And, obviously, um, Queen's obviously profited as well from it um, with the long clause or whatever they had in with it had in contracts and uh, stuff like that so it really helped the Scottish football I think as well especially with that pandemic with coming and lockdowns coming as well I think um, it was really good for the clubs to, to kind of get that money and yeah I just said um, obviously it was really good for the the club to get uh, figures as what they did, what um, it helped out Queen of the South Obviously, having selling clauses and uh, as well, it helps Scotland, the Scottish teams, time and obviously still now help them as well, out as which is really good for the clubs because obviously there's a lot of clubs out there struggling. And like you said, that is life changing for myself just to to come down here and be such a big club at like QPR. So um, yeah, it was really I'm really grateful that it came up and um, yeah. Mm. Uh, I, it's just um. It was one of the, I think, um, when transfers happen like that, obviously fans of clubs are sad to go and stuff, but I don't think you've really st- ever seen such a positive reaction to a star player leaving a club as you did um, you going to QPR. Uh, it cut out again, sorry. And also, well, maybe with some of your QPR wages, you can buy me a new router. Um, <laughs> but um, no, it was obviously when when your announcement um, was made about you leaving, it was such a positive reaction. Usually, there's a bit of sadness to that, but it was completely positive um, when you were announced that you were going to QPR. I think it was just made up for you and the club. Yeah, that's what um, I think as well. Like Livy, they were just they were just proud, um, and the fans were great as well. And obviously. That was something that I wanted to do um, to try and get to the highest that I can be in my career, and and that was the step that I wanted to take. And everyone was grateful of it. Um, they took a chance on me to go into the Premier League, and um, it paid off. So I think, yeah, obviously just being a being a good club, and they obviously know where they are in in financial sides and um, and as a club in general. So. Yeah, that is. I always speak highly of, of Livy and the fans and everyone in the backroom staff and everyone that I've played played for because it was great times. Mm-hmm. And uh, David Martindale's not doing too bad now. I mean, just he, he doesn't know how to lose games apparently since he's took over that job. Yeah, uh, they're flying at the moment. Um, no, nah, but it's it's amazing. Obviously, um, Davy's Davy's a great guy as well, and I got on with him really well and. Um, I, I, we're really close. I, I still co- keep in t- contact with him, and the team there is is really good as well. I think, I think last season we proved a lot of people wrong. Um, obviously, when I was there, and I think this season they started off a little bit, little bit sticky. But now that they're they're, they're done really well, and they're 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 really high up in the table, and I can only see them getting higher. And I think uh, Davy's going to do a great job, and um, I, I, and I'm sure. The boys will as well, and um, I'm sure they're going to bring in a, a couple more players as well. And um, yeah, I can only wish them the best, and I wish David the best as well. And I think they're always on the rise, to, to be honest. Mm, yeah, I've seen they signed um, Gav Riley, another former Queen of the South man, so they must just be hoping for Lyndon Dykes 2.0 with that one. <laughs> yeah, I did see that. I did see that too, though. <laughs> But um, no, and obviously they've got the League Cup semi-final to go to. So I mean, in fact, no, you wouldn't have played in any of the League Cup games this year, so you can't expect a winner's medal, can you? No, I don't think I did, to be honest. Um, no, but I mean, like I said before, I hope I hope they do great. I hope they get to the final. I hope they win. I hope they win it. Um, it would be great, Davey, great for the club, and great for my all my, my my friends back there and my and the boys, and um, I'm sure I'll be watching the games and and uh, wishing the best for them. Mm-hmm. Um, just final, obviously, if, um, the seven-figure move, the big move to the English Championship, didn't put you in our headlines. Um, becoming Scotland's favourite Australian since Mel Gibson, probably. <laughs> um, over the course of sort of September to November, um, obviously you've had the interest with the big move and stuff like that, but that's just another level of 
fame really here in Scotland um, being one of the key men and sending the country back to the Euros? Yeah, obviously, um, just being a part of it was amazing. Uh, obviously, at the time, I, I was fortunate enough to, to try and pick out of Australia and Scotland and um, and it was the best decision picking Scotland because I've just felt at home and obviously being involved in that team to get to the Euros is uh, amazing for myself, an amazing achievement and um, yeah, just a proud moment. So hopefully we can do well in the Euros and hopefully we can uh, we can beat England as well for everyone. Mm, I'm sure um, anybody at QPR will love listening to that wee soundbite. But, you know, it must, must be, I mean, again, it goes to this full journey thing. That, I mean, a few years ago, you're playing at Queen of the South in such places, and then June, you could potentially play, in, or probably will be playing in a Scotland v England Euro 2020 match. Like, even that sentence alone just sounds bonkers. It's, um, yeah, it's mad. Obviously, I was working full time and playing with my pals, and then I was at Queen of the South um, trying to do my best. And then next minute, I'm, I'm playing with Scotland. and playing in a game that against Serbia and, yeah, and playing with world-class players in the team. Um, yeah, it's, it's really crazy if you think about it. And uh, like I said before, though, with um, young boys and young young uh, girls coming up and playing football, then they should always dream for the top because once I kind of got a sniff for it, I didn't want to look back. And, um, yeah, so it's, it's it, I'm really privileged that I've got here. But... Um, just shows you that if you just kind of work hard and you get a bit of luck on the way, then God knows where you can end up. Mm. How are you sort of, obviously it's still a wee bit away, but in terms of the games in November, was it just career high for you? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously that, it was just amazing, obviously being involved. Uh, it's just still doesn't feel real when you're thinking that I've, I've played international football. Um, but I think obviously the career, career high at the moment is obviously that Serbia game and um, just being involved in winning that game with the boys and for the for the country and the manager and the staff and um, that that is definitely one to beat in my future career and I don't think much will top it. No, because I think um, I know you're not on Twitter despite the best efforts of somebody to impersonate. <laughs> um, yeah, it really it was crazy. Like, I, I don't know if you've seen all the reaction stuff on it, but it's probably one of the best nights in Scottish football, at least in my time. I was born in 2001, so uh, definitely the best night of Scottish football in my lifetime and probably many others. And I suppose to say you were played a key part in that is just something you can look back on in another 20 years' time and think, wow. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, even for my, my, my little son uh, growing up, something that he can... He can uh, look up to and and watch when he's older, and I think as well at the time it was even better because obviously this this uh, virus and how uh, everyone's been down and um, it's been such a hard year for a lot of people, and then uh, to go and do that for Scotland, you, I, I see I did see a lot of the videos uh, going around, just people in their living rooms and jumping, going mad, and just like we were after we won, and um. I think it was really good just for the whole nation just to feel that. And I think um, I think it was just, a, like you said, it was a great night for everyone. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really good. I think the question everybody wanted to know was, did Andy Considine end up in Dragon, the hotel in Serbia? <laughs> no, but um, uh, that song that he was singing was uh, obviously getting blasted everywhere. Um, but what a guy, what, what a guy. And uh, it was just, just amazing for him as well, even, even being involved in, He's had such a great career up at Aberdeen and um, no, what a guy. He's a great guy. Mm, brilliant. Um, just finally then, obviously it's big um, six months for you at QPR, but then uh, the season doesn't end there for you. Uh, you've obviously got Euros. Uh, another exciting six months for you. Uh, obviously looking forward to it, but also at the moment I'm just focused at QPR. Uh, Obviously, I want to keep playing well and keep scoring some goals, and um, hopefully, I get involved in that in that uh, Euro squad and the next international squads, and um, yeah, it'll be really good to get back back with the boys, and um, hopefully, we can we can keep flying keep flying high with the with the boys in um, in the World Cup qualifiers and the Euros. Thanks,